Hello, world. Look at you with your talking sword. The transistor is a five foot tall, glowing, talking, transparent sword that also stores people in it. The transistor presents a number of challenges to build. It is transparent, it's huge, it blinks, it changes colors, it also speaks. Bringing all of that from a video game into reality employs everything that we have here. It involves vacuum forming, CNC machining. There's a lot of different paint techniques involved in it. There's a lot of electronics. There's hundreds of LEDs in it. It has audio, it has reactive lighting, it has two power supplies. It's pretty much everything we do here all rolled into one package. It's definitely one of the most complicated things that we can build. The transistor's got a lot of very disparate parts that all need to be tackled separately before you can put them all together into one final piece. What's on your mind? The electronics in the transistor are among the most complicated we've ever put in a prop. It needs to be able to light up red, to light up green, it needs to be able to blink, it needs to be able to pulse with audio, and it needs to be able to speak. In order to do that, we're using an Arduino microcontroller that functions as the brain for all of this. Even though the transistor is huge, we don't have a ton of space, so I gotta cram a lot of stuff into this little area. We have the brain board, we've got an audio trigger board, we've got a remote board, and we've got a little chip. They're all soldered onto this one tiny thing with a bunch of wires everywhere. It looks crazy, but it all makes a lot of sense, and it all fits in a really nice, tight, concise package. Plenty of room in here. One of the largest and most necessary parts of the transistor is the piece that we call the core. The core serves as a central support structure for everything. All of the other pieces of the transistor are mounted to it. The lenses, the eye pucks, the electronics, the handle, it all sits around the core. The core is made up of several pieces of CNC cut thick Sintra plastic, as well as some pieces of transparent acrylic uh, and one huge steel bar in the center welded to a steel rod. That gives the core a lot of strength. It provides support from the handle all the way down into the rest of the blade. Make sure that everything is nice and solid. Hey Red, you can hear me, right? The voice is one of the most important parts of the transistor. In game, your sword boyfriend operates not only as your companion, but he's also the narrator while things are going on. He's your friend. The speakers in the sword are powered by a small amplifier. There's two speakers, they're right in the cross guard. The guys at Super Giant Games took their voice actor and re recorded a bunch of the lines from the game for us to use in this sword. It's really neat because you can press a button and he can say any number of lines from the game, and even when you switch to the red mode when your sword boyfriend gets a little bit sick, you can hear him sound kind of drunk and loopy. Something's gotten into me, I think. It adds a really cool emotional element. What do you see? There's a central piece in the core which we call the eye, and I feel like it's an important thing because it's kind of his face. You develop a connection, it's, it, it's like that's where his personality is coming out of. It's made up of several vacuum form panels. Some of them are clear, some of them are somewhat translucent. They're stacked on top of each other to give the appearance of a lot of depth into the core of the piece. We painted them red uh, from the interior so that they're glossy on the outside. They're matte along the interior surface though, so that when the eye lights up with all of those LEDs we placed inside, it has a really nice even glow. This thing on. The transistor in-game has a bunch of different lighting effects. It can glow green, glow red, it blinks when it speaks. In order to achieve this aesthetic, we scattered over 150 RGB LEDs throughout the core as well as the eye segments. To disperse the light inside the blade of the transistor, we custom cut a series of one half inch thick acrylic panels. These were cut on our laser and they have a pattern on them that helps disperse and diffuse light and reduce the hot spots from the LEDs. It's gonna make everything glow a lot nicer and, and be a lot brighter once the whole sword is assembled. I'd say the, the most iconic, striking, visually resting piece of the transistor is the blade, this giant glowing green segment of the sword. 
In order to create this, we took clear PETG plastic and vacuum formed four individual pieces. These were then trimmed out on our drill press. Before painting, we added a set of transparent reflective vinyl decals to the inside of each of the blade segments that emulates that technological process look that permeates the entire game transistor. For painting the blade sections, we had to mask off everything because we want the outsides to be nice and glossy. We want the insides to be flat matte so that all the light that happens on the inside of the blade stays in there and it glows really nice bright green. We mixed a matte clear coat with a UV reactive very vibrant dye and then sprayed several layers onto the interior of each of the blade segments until we had just the right shade of green that we were after. Crossguard is a huge triangular piece that sits in between the blade and the handle and it has a secret compartment uh, with a bunch of magnets that open up to reveal everything you need in order to get this thing wired up. It's got the brain in there, it's got the receiver for the remote, it's got the batteries, and we also have the on-off switch, and all the wiring for all the LEDs is all hidden inside there. It's a nice tidy package, you can keep it all hidden away. Gonna need a place to hold this thing, so we need to build a handle. Luckily, we've built three transistors before this, so we have a mold ready, and we can go straight to casting. Uh, we made the handle out of epoxy resin, uh, backfilled that with some expanding foam. It makes the parts very strong, but really lightweight. After a whole bunch of time sanding and priming, we went on to painting it with a urethane paint. It's a very bright yellow with some gold gradients. And then we clear coat it with another clear urethane that has a really fine gold flake in it to give it a little extra shine. Assembly is always a little bit of a scary process because you don't want to scratch up your nice paint, you don't want to drop anything or get glue in the wrong place. With the transistor it's especially terrifying because everything in here is permanently sealed. Once you put the lenses on and once you put the blade together, you cover up and you glue all the screws into place. So if it's not working and it's not perfect, <laughs> kind of screwed. It's, 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 it seems so disingenuous to say this when a company is hiring you to build a prop, but Transistor is honestly one of my favorite games. And the, the emotional connection between you and Red and the sword and the journey you go through is, is powerful and it's one of my favorites. I keep saying I'm not going to build another Transistor and here I am and we just finished up number four. This Transistor has been engineered to be lighter weight, brighter illumination, cleaner paint, and a lot more streamlined with the electronics as well. I like that I had the opportunity to improve the process. I like that I had the opportunity to really get this thing perfect. When you speak, I hear silence. Every word, a defiance. I can 